Hey Minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and I wanted to do a brief follow-up on the cast system that I introduced on Monday. I got a lot of good comments, but a few people asked if I would do this for every expansion, and there simply isn't time for that. I did want to revisit it in the context of at least one expansion, so I chose Science Fiction Double Feature, which is still one of my favorite expansions today. From a historical standpoint, it's the third expansion, which gives them time to stabilize some of the game's core concepts, and I think this provides an important milestone in the game's development. So I will be looking at Cyborg Apes, Shapeshifters, Super Spies, and Time Travelers. As many of you know, Cyborg Apes and Shapeshifters are routinely in my top 10. Super Spies I am somewhat bearish on, although I do like their Titan, and I am extremely disappointed with the Time Travelers. It is interesting to see if there is any correlation with the cast system, and if cast is inadvertently a litmus test for what I enjoy. If you aren't familiar with the cast system, I would pause this video and go watch Monday's video, as I won't be able to go over it again. For the Cyborg Apes, they have a lot of play on minion actions. On Monday, I described Upgrade as being an ideal advanced candidate, because it is non-terminal, persistent power. For the same reason, Cyber Evolution is advanced, although better. Obviously, it could be used terminally, but it doesn't have to be, and I think it's great that it can be set up in advance, only to compound with other actions later. One of those actions is Juiced Up. It would be easy to think of Juiced Up as a terminal action, but it's not. It has extreme terminal potential, but it doesn't have to be used that way. You could absolutely play Juiced Up first. In fact, it's less power creep than Cyber Evolution. And I love that flexibility, which is why it's a great advance card. Shielding is a defensive card, so like the previous defense cards, you have two more advance options. Flying Monkey also fits the same category, because you are setting up a future play to keep your minion alive. It's great to start off with six advance actions. But the Cyborg Apes sprinkle in a few counter cards as well. Going Bananas can rip through opposing actions and counter some factions very hard. Monkey on your back provides non-scalable destruction, but it is potentially repeatable. That could be significant. You may recall that having at least the threat of destruction was important for Cyborg 8 Musketeers in March Smashness, but not having enough counters also played a role. Finally, we have two expand cards. Missing Uplink is great as it gives you an extra card each turn, protected once from discarding, because you draw at the end of your turn. Monkey See Monkey Do can be a very powerful draw card, as I have hit 5 actions before. Just ask Sonus how that went. For the first faction, we have a very good spread of cards that mostly benefit you, while still having the ability to slightly affect others. Moving on to Shapeshifters. This one was surprisingly difficult. I'm going to start with the obvious ones. Genetic Shift provides temporary power, so clearly terminal. Shell game is defensive, so clearly advance. Splice is nice as Cyber Evolution, but worse, which still makes it advance. Mitosis is similar to Summon, which I made advance, so this feels like it should be advance. But whereas Summon can give you your first minion in play, Mitosis cannot. Yet it isn't required to be on the same base, so you can still spread, which would mean it doesn't have to be terminal. So I'll stick with advance. Cellular Binding absorbs the ability of something else, which makes it unpredictable, a clear trait of a situational card. That's 6 out of 10. But what about the other 4? By rule, Back to the Future can be used antagonistically, so it has to be listed as a counter card. It doesn't have to be used this way, but it does provide the means to take out a powerful minion, even if it gets replaced. But what about Really and Transmogrify? They replace minions, which should hopefully be an upgraded minion. That seems like advance. But you don't want to waste those minions, which implies terminal. You need the right setup in play, both the minions you replace and their replacements. I strongly prefer to have Shell Game out in order to save those minions and get free plays, so it's a play I have to set up, which is also a trait of situational. Given that there is both flexibility and requirements necessary for these cards, I am putting them there. That still gives them a fairly interesting spread of 1 counter, 3 advance, 4 situational, and 2 terminal. Next is the Super Spies. It's worth noting that, unlike the core set counter cards, all spy cards scale for multiplayer, which is a step in the right direction. 
but there is still a high density of counter cards. Discards are forever is a bit weird, as it also hurts you, and you need to mitigate that. That would make it situational, but given that you are trying to antagonize the other players, it has to be counter. Permit to Kill and The Spy Who Ditched Me are strict counter cards through minion discards, while Mindraker is blocking the play of specials. Also a counter, but perhaps a theoretical one. Mindraker is a curious fit, as there are no before the base score specials in this set. It cannot block Flying Monkey, which is already in play. For this set, all it really does is block the Time Traveler after specials, and it's not like Time Travelers needed the nerf, especially for those cards. I could easily include Live and Let Chum and the base is not enough as counter cards, because they are specials that specifically take out the other players. But because they are safe for a moment where it matters, I stand by my original definition of situational. You would only play them if they would result in a point swing. The remaining spy candidates are good expand options, as they help you to get better cards faster through deck sifting. The spies have a spread of 5 counter, 2 situational, and 3 expand. It's nice seeing the expand options, but 5 counters is still too high. That just leaves the time travelers. Let's start with time walk. What do we do with time walk? It can play an extra minion, which is advance. It can draw cards, which is an expand trait. It's the only really burst card they have, which is a terminal trait. Does that make the card situational? Given that the goal is to be generous, I am marking this one as advance, based purely on theoretical potential. It's not how I would use the card, but you could, and for this exercise, that's all that matters. Into the Time Slip is clearly antagonistic, as it is a stronger beam up, and time travelers have little reason to do this on themselves, especially since it can knock out titans. Stasis Field literally stops bases from breaking, which is the uber counter card. 1.21 gigawatts is a recursion card, which is easily understood as expand. It's Astounding is also a recursion card. It's like a one time they're coming to get you, so I consider it expand, even though it has situational tendencies. The two specials, which I'm honestly not a fan of, are both situational. Time is fleeting requires an incredible setup for it to be worth it. You can never use it on the first base, and you need to have a base worth replacing. It's rare that this card amounts to anything for me. Wormhole should be good, but it provides no granularity, forcing you to shuffle minions you may not want. You also shuffle in jumpers, which is anti-synergy within the faction. That just leaves do-over. Do-over could be used terminally as a pivot play, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't directly help you advance either, as it can result in a net loss of equity. So this is a situational play for me, especially since the time travelers lack good candidates within their faction. Unless you were using it terminally, you wouldn't use do-over on Dr. Wen, because you could just use do-over on the minion Dr. Wen would select. And if you are using it on Repeater Perfect, you need to wait until you have an action worth saving. That brings the final spread to three counter cards, one advance, four situational, and two expand. Looking at the chart for this expansion, things did get better. Counter is still the highest concentration, but it's really close between the top three. Advance should definitely be up there, and I'm okay with having a high situational count as long as the payoff is worth it, because I like setting up plays. But drilling deep within the numbers, I obviously love Cyborg Ape and Shapeshifters, and they have lower counter rates and mostly advanced cards. I'm okayish on spies, who do little from their actions to help their own cause. And time travelers really do not help their own cause very much, not in a direct payoff way, which may explain why the community tends to dislike them outside of very specific pairings. So I don't think that cast is about counting the counter cards, but counting the advance and expand. The issue with the core set was that they avoided these two types by focusing on the counter cards. The time travelers show that, even with a more modest counter rate, avoiding the two good categories by focusing on situational cards creates the same problem in a slightly different form. And it's no surprise why we see the spies and the time travelers get a titan when they are clearly unable to help their own cause. I have to be honest, this makes me want to go through my top 10 and see how those factions profile to see if cast is a personality litmus test. It's hard to say because some of those factions are very minion-centric, but it's something I may have to consider. Time is short, though.
Do you think that science fiction double feature got better from a cast perspective? Which expansion do you think does it best? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.